Variable data printing is not a new process. However, variable data is typically limited to uh, four color printing, something that can change with any, inside any color on your design. But if we wanted to print onto a foiled material, like on an HP Indigo, um, using a foil material with white and CMYK, then our variable data is limited because we cannot have anything in foil variable because it would require a unique white ink mask which has to be made manually. So if you had 10,000 variations of people's names, every name would have to have its own unique white ink mask. Now with ColorLogic, we bypass all this. We don't make white ink masks at the design stage. We process this on the fly as the file is being processed. I'm going to show you how this works using HP's Smart Stream Designer plugin for Adobe InDesign. This is a great plugin that allows you to be able to do variable data colored foil areas on your design. So for example, this area here where it says invert variable data text, I'm going to show you a few different techniques. So first of all, I'm going to go to my swatches and you would normally go to new color swatch and you'd load the colors from your ColorLogic library. And this is going to give you all of our metallic effects for our color system. So you add the colors you want to work with. So here we're going to work with metallics. So let's think, okay, we've got a black background. Maybe we'll make that text gold. So first of all, color up the text. Now the next one we're going to do is dimensional effects. So I'm going to color up the background of this one, a green. Then this one we're going to have a blue. And this one I'm going to have as a pink. So at the moment, we've got a metallic number 58. So my dimensional effect text needs to be 58 dimensional effect. In the background here, we're using number 110. And this one, I want to have a watermark. So I'm going to use the 110 watermark. And here, I'm going to use a watermark effects plus. So I'm going to use the appropriate color. So I color up my artwork. Now, if we look at our separation preview, you will see we've designed a color logic separation. So this is this black area here is where the metallic substrate is going to be. And all this white, this white text, this tone of white and the tone of white here in the text is all going to be the white ink separation. It's the, where the white ink prints on the press. And this bit is where the silver substrate will show through. So notice here we have white text. So if we change that text, it's going to have a new white ink plate. So look what happens when we apply variable data. So I'm going to go to Smart Stream Designer. First of all, I'm going to add the database. So I'm going to go in here. I've already specified one earlier, but I will do it again. You go to the database folder, add in the database. I'm going to do a tab delimited. Same thing here. Yeah. Okay. So we can see down here we have, uh, I think I put in 10 different elements of text. So I'm going to click on OK. Next, I'm going to go and bring up the uh, data fields window. This is where I can actually add in data fields. So I'm going to select this text and highlight all that text. I'm going to apply my metallic database to that. Sorry, not metallic, my variable database to that. So what you do is select the text and apply. I'll apply the same database to each one. Click on there. So now it's got the instructional information to say, go to that database and apply that database to this text. Now these texts are our color logic uh, spot colors. Um, there are uh, metallic color libraries built into the system. So look what happens when we preview this. So I'm going to turn on my preview and notice how that's changed. So if I click through this and watch the text change in each one of these. So we've got number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now look what happens if I put that with the four color off. So you'll see here this white will be the white ink. So notice the number two, it changes. So this is changing. The white ink mask is automatically changing as it's processing the file at the rip. It's not doing it in the design. You're not having to make white ink masks. All done on demand, quick and easy as you process the file. So with color logic, the unique feature of being able to do variable data colored foils will be a world's first. This is a very unique system to be able to add variable data to anything from a label to packaging design. You could have a high-end whiskey box with a variable data, so it's a personalized whiskey for somebody's maybe 50th birthday. 
you could have personalized beer labels, you know, Richard's Brewery, and you could have sequential numbering, all of these things out of different metallic effects. Now what's more is that this here, where it's a dimensional effect, this is gonna have a flip-flop change. So not only is it variable, but it will go lighter and darker as you move the print. This watermark will appear and disappear in the print as you move it. And this watermark effects plus will be more of a covert, subtle watermark with inside any colored area. So now, not only we've got these multiple metallics, we've got multiple effects and it's variable. So color logic, pushing the boundaries of your print with variable data printing. In the second part of this demonstration, we're going to actually apply the variable data to a live design. This is to really show you how you can use it with inside a, um, a simple design layout. So we're going to use this save the date card. And what we're going to do is add in three variable fields. We're going to have a variable image of the happy couple. There's going to be the variable name of the happy couple. And then there's the variable wedding dates. So you could set this up as a template based system online where people submit their information and then this just drops in through your database and you can output that as a variable data field. So to set this up, we're going to go to the SmartStream Designer and we're going to go to a database. So first we have to link our text database. This will contain all the names and all the dates of locations of when they're going to get married. So it's all in here. The second thing we're going to do is the assets folder. Now the assets folder is going to be used for our variable photographs. So these are the images. So click on choose and then we click on OK. So that's adding the first step. Now let's just take a look at the Excel file so we can see what it is that we're doing as variable data. So we have two columns here. One is marked as name, one is marked as date. So this is the information you're going to collect from your customers and dates, however you want to set that up and then save that as an Excel file, like a CSV file. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the window menu and we're going to go to data fields. Now this is going to bring up a floating palette and you'll see here database, which is what we linked, is showing the two fields, you've got name and date. So first of all, let's start working with that. Let's highlight the text and let's just click on name. That's going to apply the variable data field to the name. And then I'm going to select all of this text here and apply that to the date. Now we wanted to work with this image as well. So let's just take that image there. This time I'm going to go to channels and we're going to add in a new image channel. So click on this little icon here. And that now makes it a variable data field for imagery. We can now go to the sub navigation menu, go to modify image channel. This brings up a floating part again that says it's an image type. The data field is to match the name. So what you have to do is make sure that the name of the happy couple matches the name in the text field. So if this is Lucy and Dwayne, then the image should be called Lucy and Dwayne. OK, so with that done, we can click on OK. We can now go to the preview, click on preview, and we can cycle through this. So watch how the names and the pictures all change. So What's happening here is everything that's in this gold colored here is going to be a gold foil. So that's going to be a varied gold foil on your digital press. The way that works is you have a silver foil substrate on the back of this design and then you have an, a, an opaque white knockout mask that stops the substrate from showing through. So around this text here is a white knockout mask. Now if you were to do this without color logic Variable data printing with colored foils does not work because, as we mentioned, you have to make a white knockout mask. So if each variation changes, notice how the white knockout mask would have to change. So if you had 10,000 customer names and each one wanted it to be variable data in foil, you would have to do 10,000 knockout masks. But with color logic, we don't do this. Our unique color palettes and plugins work in such a way that it creates what we call an effect printing plate. And that is processed at the rip as the file has been processed, which means that we never make a white knockout mask, which also means that variable data printing with color logic does work. So it's a, a unique ability with the color logic system. If we turn off the CMYK, and let's just look at this separation for the color logic. Whatever you see as white on here is white ink. So that's a white knockout mask for this image. 
and where we have the black that's where the substrate's going to show through so if we cycle through these again you'll see how that that knockout mask always changes and this is all calculated fully automatic as the file has been processed using color logic from there once we've got the file ready we can then go to output it so we're going to go to create job and you set up your JLYT file as normal and the color mode needs to be changed to color logic so you have to have the color logic system installed and you have to have the color logic ability on your HP Indigo press without that this does not work so very simple very easy to use and apply the effects and you would get your variable data printing.